Sony's PlayStation 5 console has as many pre-orders in 12 hours that the predecessor PlayStation 4 did in 12 weeks. What? According to a Reuters article, there was an interview with the Sony CEO, Sony Interactive, Jim Ryan, stating that the demand expressed by the level of pre-order has been very, very considerable, and that the Japanese tech company pre-sold as many PlayStation 5 consoles in the first 12 hours in the United States alone as it did in the first 12 weeks for its predecessor PlayStation 4 device. And for the record, Sony went on to sell over a hundred million PlayStation 4s. So the demand for the PlayStation 5 is not even on this planet anymore. It is somewhere in the galaxy as far as people wanting one of these things in their house before it even is available to the public. Now, Sure, some of the people pre-ordering this are doing so just for the reason of scalping. That's been a trendy thing ever since, well, the dawn of eBay. But it's becoming more and more of a trend as time goes on. But I'm starting to think that it's not just scalpers that are pre-ordering these. In fact, the vast majority of people that I've talked to can't wait for the PlayStation 5. Which is interesting because this launch is really like no other PlayStation launch. There's nothing really exciting coming out right off the bat outside of a Spider-Man sequel, Miles Morales. And yeah, there are a few other games that look cool, but it's the launch of a new console. And the games that come out with it typically are bare bones or there's not very many games coming out when it launches. Now in the launch window, yeah, there will be more games coming as time goes on, but initially, no. And historically, most people have just waited. They've wanted a second rev of the actual console to make sure all the kinks and bugs are worked out of it, or looking for a sale, or waiting for a game that they want to buy it. But this is different. There is an entirely new generation of gamers that want to enter the video game sphere with the PlayStation 5. These numbers I cannot even comprehend and people will try to explain it off but I am telling you guys right now 12 hours of pre-sales equal the first 12 weeks for the previous console of sales that is just that's mind-blowing that includes the pre-orders for the PlayStation 4 that includes the launch week two weeks three weeks month two months three months of the launch of a console and the PlayStation 5 outsold that in 12 hours. What? Like, you can't even make this stuff up. That is absolutely bonkers. Now, as far as why this is, I already said the game's not really a selling point so much. Just like most consoles previously, there's nothing that's like, oh my god, I have to get this for this game. Because honestly, most of the games people want are available for the PlayStation 4 anyways. And a lot of people don't even have a TV that will play the resolution necessary to get the most out of the PlayStation 5. So what is it? Why are people so drawn to getting the PlayStation 5 on launch day? I'm beginning to think it has something to do with this ongoing pandemic. People spending more time around the house, people getting back into gaming, people haven't touched it for a while, a new generation of, of kids that are growing up that want to get their first console, all accumulating into this one event of a launch of a console that is just everybody is waiting for and even I couldn't have predicted this kind of demand for a launch day. Like, I, I, I'm having trouble comprehending this, if you can't tell by the video. The pandemic is pushing people to want to get this first day because they'll get the most value out of it, the most bang for their buck, because the longer they wait without it, they're probably going to be spending full price on it anyways, so why not pay that money up front and get it right when it's available. In addition to that, there have been generally favorable reviews from a lot of YouTubers who have gotten one of these consoles early. I saw Jason Schreier on Twitter talking about how the 
force feedback on the controller and he's not sure at this point if it's something that's just gonna be a gimmick or if it's actually something that will be extremely useful in every game that comes out it's still too early to tell and we'll see when the games start coming out if it's something that actually is implemented across the board but off the bat first impressions he says it blew him away and that he's very excited about the future of that and that's something I said about the controller as well that I never even thought of initially but as I saw it come out I'm like yeah, that seems like the natural evolution of a controller. That force feedback is going to be a game changer for a lot of these games where you actually have to fight the controller to pull the trigger. If you're pulling back a bow for shooting an arrow or, or pulling the trigger on a gun or so many different reasons why that would make an impact to give more immersion to the game experience. So there are a lot of things going well for the PlayStation 5 right now, but wow. These, these first impressions, they came after the pre-orders went live. So that wasn't a selling point for the people that wanted to pick one of these up. That's just icing on the cake saying, reinforcing their decision of, yes, I want to pre-order one of these things. And, oh, good, people actually like it. When I went to pre-order mine, I wanted it because I knew these things were going to be tough to get. But I had no idea it was going to be this challenging. It seems that everything is coming together mostly because there's a lot of people at their houses, people getting back into gaming, and this whole pandemic thing that's been happening, making everybody want to get out and buy that PlayStation 5. Wonder why it's not like that for the Xbox right now? It might have something to do with being able to play the games on a PC and more excitement around the exclusives on the PlayStation 5 where it's the only place you'll be able to play certain games down the road but again like I said some of these games especially at launch are going to be available on both the PS4 and PS5 so it's not quite the buying proposition immediately but down the road obviously there would be staying power for the console at that point as far as the availability of PlayStation 5s and how many are being made in another article uh, on Engadget, they said, contrary to an earlier Bloomberg report, Sony said that it won't have any supply issues when the console goes on sale November 12th in the U.S., Japan, and other launch regions, and November 19th elsewhere. It didn't say exactly how many units would be available upon launch, but Ryan said there would be more PlayStation 5s than there were PlayStation 4s when it launched back in 2013. At that time, the company sold 2.1 million PS4s in the first two weeks after launch and 4.5 million between launch and the end of the year. Now, there were rumors initially saying that the PlayStation 5 would have somewhere between, I believe it was like 11 to 14 million PlayStation 5s available at launch. Not really sure if that's been confirmed or not, or what Sony ended up with actually at the end of the day. But if it's upwards of 10 plus million units, that is absolutely insane. Looking at the numbers from previously released articles back when the PS4 launched from Trusted Reviews, it said that PS4 pre-orders topped 1 million units ahead of the November 29th launch date back when the PS4 launched. So if that... If that's anything to go by, PlayStation 5 is going to be selling a hell of a lot of consoles in the launch day. Like, wow. Absolutely bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. So, I think it's going to be hard to get one of these after it launches. And I'm not talking like a week or two or a month or two. I'm talking like the first quarter or two after the PlayStation 5 launches, there may not be any around. And whatever that does go out there will be gobbled up quick by the public. It strikes me as something akin to what it was like when you were trying to get a Nintendo Wii back in the day. For those of you that remember the rush at stores to get those, it was tough to find a Nintendo Wii over a year after it released. Not even joking. It was still hard to find one. I remember I walked into a, a Costco and they just dropped off a pallet of them. There were like, I don't know, like a hundred or two hundred of them on this pallet all, all stacked up. And they literally just dropped it off in the middle of the floor. And I was like, oh, that's how I'm going to get my Nintendo Wii. And I walked over and picked it up. And I was like, yeah, I got it. And then there were like people everywhere that just ran over and got one. I was like, this is madness. This is absolutely insane. And that was like, 
seven months after the Wii launched, that it was still that crazy. And I foresee a very similar situation taking place right now with the PlayStation 5. Get one of these if you see it in the store, if you haven't pre-ordered it already. If more come available during the pre-order window before it launches, jump on it right away if you want one, because these are going to be very tough to find. And yeah, it is going to be the holiday item to get for 2020, no doubt. I'm going to leave the video right there. Interested to hear what you guys have to say about this situation with the PlayStation 5. If you're surprised, if you expected this, why you think it's happening, where you stand on it, and if you pre-ordered it or not, let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, you stay smashing. Smash.